This is PMR Boons 88. And last weekend, I finally got to see a movie in theaters, and hallelujah, I finally saw it was The Amazing Spider Man 2. I finally got the tickets earlier in, in advance and went in theaters, and when I saw it, I should say it's. It was good. The action was good, and the story plot and the origin talk about more about Peter's parents. Um, there were a few scenes that were missed or there was something missing about it and technically um, there were some scenes that that were seen in the trailer but it wasn't seen in theaters and also that was another problem they did the same thing for the first Amazing Spider-Man but none of that the it's not like um, Spider-Man 3 Sam Raimi Spider-Man 3 but technically I was happy well happy but sort of disappointed I wanted, I would have expected more about this movie, and including of the ending, how to end it was probably a to be continue. So probably that's why, that's why they're gonna show for the upcoming Spider-Man films. So the movie starts out where Peter Parker is now Spider-Man. He's having fun. He's enjoying it, and he's trying to break the balance. He's having a tough time having a superhero life and a normal life as Peter Parker. And technically, he has a um, love relationship problem between him and Gwen. Every time when um, he talks with her or he hangs out with her, he always sees images of Gwen's father, Captain Stacy, because um, he made a promise to him that he would leave Gwen alone and not to be involved with his, um, not to be involved with his situation of being a Spider-Man. But sometimes they always broke up and then they get to get back together again. They break up again. It goes back and forth, but they don't show it. They just explain of how their relationship is going. So in other words, it's really complicated. So their relationships is really complicated. But their characters of Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy, their characters are really strong. They're really good. And their performance were really excellent. So that was really amazing. It's just fun, they didn't overdo it, and they did just fine. And as for like the villains, such as Electro, Green Goblin, and Rhino, that everyone was so worried that there were too many villains to face off, and it was going to be a mess, and it was going to be just like um, Deja, Deja Spider-Man 3, Raimi Boo. It was going to be like a mess, but it didn't. It really worked on it, so we only see Rhino's character for only like three or four minutes like three or four minutes around those around those times and and that's it so they kind of concentrate of much more on electro and then later they they continue of um the green goblin secondary but only i wish they just only showed of uh, the friendship between of uh, peter and harry's um friendship they show much more and then they go to the end where harry um, takes the takes the serum and becomes the Green Goblin. That's that's what they should have done and leave him to the next Spider-Man sequel. Max Dillon slash Electro played by Jamie Foxx. When he plays as Max Dillon, he's much more of a, a nerd, geek, shy guy, but everyone wants to see him and also kind of a stalker. It reminds me of um, Edward Nigma, Jim Carrey, Batman Forever movie. It's kind of a nerd, a stalking, stalking Spider-Man fan geek and he takes his performance a little too much and cartoony-ish. But when he's as Electro, he's more sinister, he's more serious and full of hatred of Spider-Man and all he ever wanted was power, power and lightning. And I love the visual effects. I liked his visual effects in the makeup and with all the veins and lights like come out of him on the inside and including his voice when his vocal cord his vocal cord was totally burned from the electrocution it made him much more electro sinister especially with the the music that keeps beating on and on but sometimes they like overdo it too much so most of the music um in other other scenes of Maxion and Electro 
it's good, but after that, it, it's taking it way too far. And as for um, Dan DeHaan, who plays as um, Harry Osborn, Green Goblin, his performance, it was he was magnificent. I think he did a good job playing as um, Harry Osborn and as the Green Goblin and seeing with the makeup that they finally did it right then. It's actually better than um, Sam Raimi's Green Goblin because we finally get to see his face and turning him all goblinish, all sinister and demonic. And I even liked his, um, I also liked his suit. His um, pro It wasn't really finished, it was a prototype suit. I think they did a good job on that one too. I was looking forward to seeing the battle between Spider-Man and Green Goblin like longer, but it was really too short, so I wish they couldn't make it longer. The storyline, however, it was really in a rush. They tried to break every single story just to fit it into one story and put it in the movie, so apparently there was like stories of Peter's life as Spider-Man and the relationship between him and Gwen Stacy and the friendship of Harry Osborn and also more importantly um, Peter Parker's parents his life and about his origins and how did it all happen but Mark Webbs did pull it off but it was kind of really in a rush and juggled too much and that's why it was in a mixture and everything was so short and but none of that, he did pull it off. So I'm not saying it's a terrible, amazing Spider-Man film. I'm saying it's really good, it's really fair, and it's really worth watching it. So it is worth watching it. I don't mind seeing it again. I can see it maybe three or four times in theaters if I have to. So just to rate this film, I will have to give this a um, eight out of 10. Is it worth watching? Yes visual effects and the action scenes were good too? Yes. The storyline? Fair. But none of that, it's really worth watching and it did hit the movie box office in the summer for now. So I'll be looking forward until it comes on Blu-ray and DVD. And this is PMR Bones 88 signing off and saying is, PEACE!